All right, guys, I guess I'm going to have to make my stance just a little bit more clear because some people just don't seem to understand what I'm saying. Um, first of all, what is the Bible? The Bible is a library. It is not a book. Um, that's the first mistake people make. Um, and inside every library, there's fiction, there's nonfiction, there's uh, proverbs, there's uh, psalms, definitions, even maps. So that's what it is. It's a, it's a it's a historical Kindle. It's the world's first Kindle. Okay. At the very least, you can respect it for that. Um, and uh, it, and I'm gonna go ahead and put it, put my cards out on the table right now. Um, do I believe that there is truth in the Bible? Absolutely. Like I said, it's a library. It's got fiction and nonfiction. You've got to know how to read between the lines. Um, you know, uh, a good example of a, a planted uh, verse would be the Romans 13. The uh, submit to your government. Um, and if you don't, you'll burn in hell. That's bullshit. Okay, and I can tell you why. Uh, if they passed a law that told you to accept the mark of the beast, then you would be at a crossroads. You would be, uh, you'd be stuck. You wouldn't know what to do. Either you obey the law of accepting the mark of the beast, or uh, you accept the mark of the beast and you go to hell, or you don't accept the mark of the beast and you go to hell because <laughs> you didn't follow the law. So that's an obvious, um, an obviously planted verse if not a planted chapter, if not a planted book. Um, you see, the problem I have with people who hate Christians is because they don't really know why they hate Christians. Um, if, if, like, uh, my favorite quote, one of my favorite quotes by Gandhi, I like your Christ, I do not like your Christians. Your Christians are so unlike your Christ. That's a true statement. That's a true statement. There's nothing wrong with being a Christian. There's something wrong with being a self-proclaimed Christian and not following the teachings. Now, the way that I look at the Bible is, I only read what Jesus said. I only read Revelations. Outside of that, I'm not really interested in the Bible. Um, because you can plainly see the contradictions all throughout. Now you have to do the history of the Bible. You have to go and find out who built the Bible, the Council of Rome. You have to figure out what the motivation was. You, I mean you have to figure out the whole history. If you're just gonna sit here and make quotes like uh, uh, one of my favorite quotes to hear from an atheist. Uh, the belief that some invisible cosmic Jewish zombie can make you live forever if you symbolically eat his flesh and telepathically tell him you accept him as your master so he can remove an evil force from your soul that is present in humanity because a rib woman was convinced by a talking snake to eat an apple from a magical tree. That's the most ignorant thing you could ever say. Apparently you have no reading comprehension skills because the Bible says that the knowledge of good and evil, it doesn't say a freaking apple. I mean, the cartoon versions that you've been exposed to your whole life, and what you need to realize is, is that the television is built by the people, the same people who are making mock human sacrifices to 40-foot statue owls. They have the hidden knowledge. They've been in schools that you'll never hear of. You were put in their public education system. You think you've got it figured out? You think there's no God, there's nothing in the world, but yet every one of your elite leaders believe in some type of force. Every one of your musicians and actors have all claimed to sold their soul to the devil. Why? If that doesn't exist. You have to understand that your bubbled education system was created by the same people who are making mock human sacrifices to 40-foot owls. I mean, it boggles the mind how you can think that your education was so much more superior to the elites. It boggles the mind. You gotta snap out of it, brother. Anyways, like I said, my view on the Bible is as follows. Some of it's true, some of it's not true. The problem with Christians is, is they don't do what Christ told them to do. Uh, prime example, Christ loved murderers, he loved rapists, he loved prostitutes, he loved thieves, he loved everybody. There was nobody he didn't love, and there's nobody that he wouldn't give a helping hand to. Now, if Christians were to follow that, 
there would be no beef with Christians. There would be no beef with the Christian religion. But, since Christians don't, um, you've taken it upon yourself, and I'm not saying all Christians, but most Christians don't. Most Christians are bigots. Most Christians are hateful, spiteful people. Greedy. Uh, they're fake. They're so fake. They're not humble at all. Um, so yeah, I, I kind of understand where you're coming from and where your hate is coming from, but you also have to realize that these are individuals. This is not a collective mind. These are individuals who have made their own personal choices to be assholes. It's not the teachings that's wrong. It's the people who pervert the teachings. Um, and I'm going to get into this further. I don't just look at the Bible. What you need to understand is, is that there are hundreds of religious texts. Thousands, maybe. I've only scratched the surface. I've, I've studied maybe a dozen religions. I've, and I'm diving right now into Hopi prophecies and stuff like that. Because what I found was interesting. Even even in the mythology, Greek mythology, there was a flood story. There's a flood story and an ark in almost every religion. Now, it varies from time. There is a six-day flood. There's a 40-day flood. There's a flood that happened in another galaxy. And we came from the dog star Sirius. I mean, depending on what text you read... Uh, there was a flood and an ark it's in it's in every every religion almost that I've looked at so far and it's in it's in even in the uh, Greek mythology so for a story to be repeated over and over and over again like that and to have a, a slight variable slight differences that's to be expected when you pass something word of mouth um, but you, but the problem is is you're not even willing to look all you've done is jumped on this uh, this bandwagon and you, you say things like this, this, you eat an apple from a magical tree. You have no idea what you're talking about. The knowledge of good and evil is morality. Once you understand morality, you're charged with upholding it. Now, if there was a way for us to teach tigers not to eat the young or kill the young of other tigers, then that tiger would be charged with morality. He would know that, hey, that's wrong. But if you look out into the wild, there are no rights and there are no wrongs. There are just autopilot beings. They are beings that exist in perfect balance and harmony. There's no right and wrong. There's no killing. There's no murder. There's no theft. None of that exists because they don't understand that. And since we do, we're charged with upholding it. And there's also another theory that says that the knowledge of good and evil is a mixing of the DNA of uh, the, the good spirits and the evil spirits. Um, if you actually read the Bible, it says that Lucifer was cast out of heaven, which, you know, I, I'm, like I said, I'm not saying any of this is true, but if you think about that logically, that means that Lucifer was here before the creation. This was his world from the get-go. Now, whether or not uh, God felt sorry for Lucifer and wanted to build him a kingdom for after his thousand years of imprisonment, uh, I don't know. I don't claim to know all the answers, and I never will. I never will. I will never claim to know everything. You can't. Um, knowledge is forever evolving. Um, but if you're not even willing to look at religious texts, then you've got a problem. You've got a problem. You've been effectively conditioned to shun away, and not just from one religious text, all religious texts. I, know, I don't just look at one story. There's not just one story, there's multiple stories. And if you're not willing to look, then you can't sit here and say that it's fake. You can't say that it's wrong. You're not even willing to look. I don't know how else to explain it. I'm not, like I said, I'm not telling you what to believe. There will never be a time where I tell you what to believe. And there will never be a time where you tell me what to believe. I can guarantee you that. Anyways. I, I'm sorry for the rant. I feel like I have to explain myself to people because they just don't understand. It's crazy. It's crazy that I'm not allowed to think for myself. I have to, I have to fit into one of your little cubes. But that's not going to happen. I've rebelled since I've been on this planet. The school system didn't know what happened to it. When I, when I showed up, they didn't know what happened. The world got flipped upside down. And you can ask any of my past teachers. In fact, in elementary school, most of my time was sit. Uh, I spent sitting on the floor in Indian style. I didn't sit in a chair. I was so rebellious, man. Um, and that's because I could see the system for what it was. I was born with that. Um, and I wouldn't change a thing. If I could be plugged into the Matrix, I wouldn't change a thing. Screw that. And um, one more thing. The 
the Bible has been mistranslated. Um, original Hebrew does not translate into English very well. And uh, I'm going to leave a link in the description for a video. Um, I mean, this is absolutely insane. To say that there's no truth in the Bible is absolutely insane. To say that there's no prophecy in the Bible is absolutely insane. And I'm going to tell you why. I'm going to leave a link in the description to this one video. And it, uh, it basically explains in perfect detail, in absolute perfect detail, it cannot be explained any clearer, uh, the size, the shape, uh, the detonation mechanism of a nuclear weapon. Uh, how it gets from its... Uh, its uh, how it gets from one place to the other and the destructive power of it. Um, it, it, it's, it, it, it describes the, the detonation mechanism for how it detonates. Uh, it's, it's insane. If you read it, uh, if you read it uh, the way it's written in English, you're not going to understand. But if you read it as an, uh, in the original Hebrew language with the original Hebrew words, it makes perfect sense. I'm going to leave a link for that. If you, if you want to challenge your mind, watch that video. Um, like I said, there's not 100% truth in the Bible, but there is some truth in the Bible. And to expose that is a, is a great thing. Like I just did the video on the 666 and the money. Um, like I said, I'm willing to look at it from both sides of the coin. From the very beginning of that video, I said I'm willing to look at it as man trying to create prophecy or prophecy being fulfilled. It could be either way. I never look at one thing one way. I always look at it from every angle. So, I mean, that, that's the only way you're going to be uh, to find the truth. If you're only willing to look at things that uh, support what you already believe, then don't look for the truth. Uh, get a new hobby. Go build model cars or something. Because uh, you, you're not going to find truth looking for what you believe already. I can tell you that. It's not going to happen. Thanks for listening. Like I said, I will leave a link to this video. If you, uh, And I've showed it to many of my atheist friends, and they're all like, you know, the hair stands on the back of their neck. They, they, they question it, and then they quickly, <laughs> they quickly forget it. Uh, they either quickly forget it or they, they, they have a change of heart. One of the two things are going to happen. You're either going to fight it with full opposition or you're going to accept it receptively and um, start looking for some answers. That's all I can say. I can't, you know, I cannot condone ignorance. Hear no evil, see no evil, speak no evil. I cannot condone that. You've got to be willing to look at everything. And if you can't look at everything, then stop looking for the truth. Get a hobby. Thanks for listening.